Finding Literature. This session will take you through a six-step approach for being systematic with your research. Planning for your question, defining your question, identifying the source which you will use to find information, build a comprehensive search, selecting the papers that you find and managing your papers. A search of the literature must be systematic to be transparent, accountable and replicable. Being systematic with your research is searching, selecting and managing the best available evidence for research according to a planned, defined and consistent method. It's about retrieving high quality and evidence based papers. The benefits to being systematic are there's less time wasting, there's increased confidence in the searching process, you are more likely to achieve a higher quality review and more relevant papers. So let's begin with the first step. Plan for your question. Is your question a literature narrative review? Are you updating an existing review or perhaps generating or testing new theory? What is the reason for your question? Will it add to your research practice? And it's really important that you ask yourself this at the very start to avoid confusion or complications in your research later on. Define your question. Let's take an example of what role does stress play in eating disorders? Think about this, this topic. What other words might you use with eating disorders or stress? For example, with eating disorders, you might be also thinking about bulimia, anorexia. Stress might also link in with anxiety and depression. And again, it's very important to think about your question before you begin to search. Uh, you might also want to be looking at, for this particular topic, you might also want to be looking in sources that, which have a, a psychology, education or a medical focus. For defining your question, there are different types of templates that you can use to develop and focus your question. One of the more common ones is PO, which is really suitable for the more qualitative type of research question. So the qualitative research is the looking at the phenomenon or the problem. So the P is the patient, the client, the person, the population, the problem. In our example here, it might be eating disorders. The E is exposure um, and is stress. There are also other templates which you can use. For example, the PICO is another one, the patient, the intervention, the comparison and the outcome. Th the third step, identify your sources. Always look for quality, currency, evidence-based, relevance, authenticity, peer-reviewed, watch out for bias. And again, it's really important uh, when you're choosing your sources that you become familiar with these terms around your research. And continuing on again with your sources, there are so many uh, and you need to decide to focus your research which sources you're going to choose which will work best for you. You may want to select a book which will give you background or subject knowledge on your question, a journal which will present the latest research, a website which will give current information. But again, you need to pay attention here to make sure that the information that is here is reliable and it's coming from a credible source. Newspapers can be useful for daily information you need to be sure though that the piece you're looking at is balanced and well researched. Grey literature is often defined as the information which is published but can be more difficult to find. Examples of this are conference proceedings and thesis. A database is a platform where you will have many different types of information sources coming together such as book chapters or journal articles. And again it's really important to know how to use the information that you find and to recognize quality sources. Identify your sources continued. Sources can consist of different types of information, such as clinical guidelines, the National Clinical Effectiveness Committee here in Ireland, and the National Institute for Clinical Excellence in the UK. Primary sources are the original information. Secondary sources might be an analysis or a commentary on the existing original information. Tertiary sources are summaries of the primary and the secondary sources, and examples here are dictionaries and bibliographies. Systematic reviews can be found in the Cochrane Library and also in the Campbell Collaboration. It's important to be familiar as well with the hierarchy of evidence. Here at the top, we have Cochrane Systematic Reviews. A systematic review is a high level overview of primary research on a particular research question that tries to identify, select, synthesize, and appraise all high quality research evidence relevant to that question in order to answer it. It's, under, it's, it's important to understand the different research types and study types also. 
And sometimes there is confusion between doing a systematic review and actually conducting your research in a systematic way. So again, continuing with our sources, it can also be helpful to look on the internet. Um, for example, in researchers fun research funders and device manufacturers websites, and maybe the trial registers as well on the ph on pharmaceutical industry websites. So let's go back to our to our question example. What role does stress play in eating disorders? And we'll have a look at some study types and papers. So for example, if we were to do a search in PsychInfo database, which is the core database for psychology and behavioral science, we might find a paper with a title, Systematic Review of the Effects of Acute Stress in Binge Eating Disorder. Um, and here we see what the methods are for the research that was done. And we are looking here at the, t the question from a psychological point of view. We might look in Education Source Database, which is a core database for um, for education, where we might find a paper with a title which is talking about a graphical tool um, for the frequency and severity, bringing in body weight and stress. And we would pay attention here to the abstract. Um, the abstract will give, give us an overall summary of the paper, and we can decide at that point whether or not we might use, need to use this paper. And it's really important to get used to doing this and not to get into the habit of downloading a lot of papers, maybe just reading the title and then realizing afterwards that they are not relevant at all to your research. Also pay attention to your keywords um, from the paper as well, as they can help, help to build up your, the bank of vocabulary for your searching. We could also look in Medline, which is the database for medicine, and we might find a paper on stress-induced body dissatisfaction in women with binge eating disorder. And again, we're looking at eating disorders and stress from a medical source as well. So here is an example from the Cochrane Library. This is an example of a trial, eating disorders with and without childhood trauma. The Cochrane Library is one of the key resources for evidence-based um, healthcare. Uh, the Central Register of Control Trials is one, one database here, as is uh, systematic reviews. Scopus is a multidisciplinary database and it's a good idea to use a database like this for your research. You may have run searches in some of the other key databases in medicine, psychology, but it's good to test your search across a multidisciplinary platform such as this. Scopus is also a citation database, which means that if you come across a paper which has some citations, it can be useful to click into the citations to see what other papers were actually citing this paper and it can lead you on into further information for your topic as well. ProQuest Thesis, this is a database which the library subscribes to and again is another source to go to to find or to find out if there are any other thesis or dissertations which have already been done in your research area. And you're looking at your topic again, stress and eating disorders through a grey literature source. So I've also included links to some of the sources that I've mentioned throughout the session. A lot of these sources will also be found in your subject lib guides. And if you need further help, I'm Liz Dore, the Faculty Librarian for Education and Health Sciences. You can also look at your subject lib guides or you can use our online inquiry service, Ask Us, Tell Us. Thank you.